so today we are making some cube steak and gravy I have heard people call it chicken fried steak but we just call it cube steak and gravy around here so um, first before I get started doing that I've got to make some seasoning salt I've just got a big bag of the Redmond's real salt so I've been able to refill all of my seasonings and stuff so I am doubling this recipe and um, I just do that because I don't like to make my um, spices that often I, I like for them to be able to last because I make all of my own spices and I make quite a lot of them so um, I don't want to have to be doing that all the time so I do double this one out in this quart jar I do two cups of salt about 10 tablespoons of the black pepper and four tablespoons of some dried parsley and then um, right here I'm doing four tablespoons of paprika I have to pour it out sometimes of these in these little jars because my scoop really don't go in there that well um, teaspoon goes in there but not my tablespoon and then I've got two tablespoons of onion powder going in there and uh, two ta uh, four tablespoons of garlic powder now feel free to add or take away anything that you would like you think you'd like in your seasoning salt and make it your own now sometimes I'll you can try to mix it by spoon but for this amount the best is to just mix it into a bowl or just shake it for a really long time and I always shake it before I use it and um, it works out good so there you have it you've made your own seasoning salt now let's get started on the cube steak so this process is super easy it's not that intimidating at all I start with about two cups of flour I don't really ever measure and then I'm gonna add some of that um, seasoning salt I, I think I go back and add a little bit more of the seasoning salt I always add extra parsley when I'm doing my cube steak and a little extra um, garlic powder and onion powder um, just because I didn't want to put that much um, salt content into this bread and because the seasoning salt is obviously heavy in salt but um, I just add a little bit of those ingredients and mix that well next I'm gonna go ahead and crack a few eggs I used about three or four eggs just whisk them up really good uh, I just wasn't really worried about wasting any so I just used probably a little more than I needed and then I'm gonna heat up a cast iron skillet with some oil in the bottom of it doesn't matter what kind of oil you use I'm using olive oil because that's all I had for the amount that I needed you just want about a quarter of an inch thick layer on the bottom of your pan you're not deep frying you're just kind of lightly pan frying it now we're gonna get into how to bread it and it's just it's really simple um, this is cube steak if you don't know I take the pieces and I cut them in half because nobody likes the really big pieces we all like the smaller pieces you're gonna dip it in your egg I kind of just wipe it on the side of the bowl and then I dip it into my flour mixture and um, I don't really care about uh, getting gummy hands or whatever but I do try to keep a dry hand and a wet hand so then I usually just go right into my hot skillet uh, you want to make sure that it's hot you don't want to put these in there when it's cold I would say around 375 you want that sizzle whenever as soon as you put it in there so um, you know and also when I'm doing these I take care to kind of press the flour onto them that kind of helps it stick a little bit too um, we really like the bread and so of course I'm gonna want to try to get the best of it so let me get a few of these done and then we'll head over and all right so now we're at the frying pan you want to put these in there like I said when it sizzles you can see that one sizzling right there you want to make sure you're getting that before you start to put your meat in because the goal here is to really brown that breading that we've put on here we're not trying to cook the meat we're just getting that um, golden brown uh, coating on the outside so don't overcrowd your pan work in batches I'm putting mine into this um, 9 by 13 casserole dish you can do these in the um, my preferred way is to put them in the slow cooker and put that just put them right directly in there and then pour the gravy over the top and let them slow cook all day but I'm doing it in the oven today because I didn't have quite that much time and it works out good they're just not as good in the oven as they are in a crock pot and now they are ready to flip just like I said they're just gonna we're just trying to get that golden brown on the outside there 
as you do like your next batches coming up the oil tends to get a little bit hotter sometimes you need to add a little bit more oil or move that around like I just did there um, I just kind of watch and it just depends on what other things I'm making or what I've got going on I typically like to do this before I start anything if I do serve it for the potatoes or anything I always do that after I've got this in the oven because the longer you bake it the more tender they're going to get and um, or if you put them in the uh, uh, crock pot they're you know insta pot or whatever they're going to be more tender that way but you just want to just get both sides browned uh, go ahead and add them to your casserole dish or your insta pot or, or crock pot or whatever you're going to cook them in and i'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these i'll leave all of that um, goodness in the pan there and that's how we're going to make our gravy so i'm just going to keep on frying and then we'll come back and um, do our gravy All right, so now let's make our gravy. You're gonna use your pan drippings and about equal amounts of flour. I just use the flour that I had my seasoning salt in. That's what I always use. And sometimes it has the little chunks of meat in it. That's fine. Um, they get really nice and tender. Then you're going to pour in your milk once that's brown just a little bit. Then you're gonna add milk. I usually add a little bit and then add a little bit more once I've whisked it in some and then you're ready to pour it over your meat and you just that's as simple as it is you just pour it over remember to make it uh, pretty runny and then I'm going in the oven at 375 for about 30 to 45 minutes just until my meat's done it wasn't as tender as it normally is um, but that just depends heavily on your quality of meat and your method of cooking now if I go with Instapot I like for it to cook all day and it's usually pretty tender no matter the quality of the meat or um, the cut of meat actually is more of a, a factor in that but this is how it looks when it's all done you've got your gravy you've got your good seasoned meat you don't need to add any salt and pepper to that gravy unless you just want some extra um, if you use the seasoning salt in flour to do your gravy so that is it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it uh, look in the description for the written out recipe and we'll see you next time thanks for watching and god bless